Welcome to Coralizer. This tutorial describes the loading and plotting of core section data. To start, you'll need a comma or tab separated values file, a CSV or TSV, containing your data. You'll also want to load section images whose data you'd like to plot. This can certainly be done after loading data in normal circumstances, but for the purposes of this tutorial, it will be easier to follow if you load your images first, as I have here. Once you're ready to load data, click File, Load Data, and choose Custom Data Import. Now navigate to the data file you'd like to, to import and click Open. In the next dialog, you'll see a series of tabs on top and some controls. And on the lower portion, you'll see the contents of your data file in their entirety. You can scroll all the way to the bottom if you like. So we will, to import this file, proceed through these tabs from left to, left to right, uh, in each one telling Coralizer how exactly to interpret our data so that it can pull it into a format it understands. In the first tab, File Info, you'll see the name of your data file here, and you could change that file by clicking the File button if you wanted to select a different file. And you will see a Field Separator field with a pop-up. That contains three options, comma, tab, and space. If you have a comma separated values file, of course, you'll use a comma. Uh, same goes for tab or space. So set those appropriately and move on to the next tab, data range. In data range, we need to tell Coralizer where the actual rows of data begin and where they end. Uh, Coralizer has already entered seven as my start line, which does match up with the first row of actual data here, number seven. And the end line, you it's good to check this. If you have a blank line at the end of your data file, this should be correct. In my case, I don't, and so Coralizer actually mistakenly thinks the last line of data is 1048, when in fact it is 1049. Uh, so it's good to check that, and I'm gonna modify mine to 1049. Uh, if bits of bad or invalid data are included in your data, you can check the ignore some bad value checkbox and fill out the field to the right with values that you'd like to ignore, for instance, negative 99999.99 or something to that effect. We don't need to ignore any values in this case, so I will leave it alone. Once that's set, move on to the next tab, field and unit label. Here we need to tell Coralizer the line numbers of the fields line and the unit line, and Coralizer has guessed correctly in this case. Line four is in fact my fields, and line five is in fact my units. Confirm that those are correct, uh, edit them if you need to, and we'll move on to the depth setup tab. Here we need to give Coralizer the column number of the depth column. Uh, in my case I have two, I have the uh, the composite depth, but I also have section depth. And because my depth mode is section depth, I will choose the section depth column, which for me is one, two, three, the third column. I'll change this to three. Uh, and at LACOR, uh, we always include the complete name of the section in our file. Uh, and if that's the case, you'll want to customize the section name. So check the customize section name box. You want to clear out the section prefix because we have the entire name in our data file already. All we need to do is tell Coralizer what column number it is. And in our case, it is column number two. I'll enter two here. And it's important to remember that in order to plot data properly, the section names in your data file must match the file names minus the extension, so .jpg for a JPEG, or .gif, or .tif for a TIFF. Uh, that part doesn't matter, but the actual file name prior to the extension must match the name indicated in your data file in order to plot images correctly. So finally, we'll move on to the rightmost tab, which is Fields. And if you entered things correctly in the previous tabs, you should now see here a list of the available fields. So check those that you wish to import. I'll just choose density and magnetic susceptibility and click the finish button. 
Now I'm prompted to save the converted Coralizer formatted file somewhere. I will save it here. You save it wherever you like. Call it den1ms1xml. And once you save this, you should now see in the session window in the data files list uh, the name of the file you just saved. And to the right of that in the fields list you should see the fields that you selected to import. So now that we have data, we can actually plot it. To do that, we need to open the graph dialog. Uh, you can do that by either right clicking on a section image and choosing graph, or you can right click on an item in the data files list and click graph. Either way, you'll be taken to this dialog. So in this dialog, you see the name of the data file that you opted to graph. Uh, if you have multiple data files, you can select which one you want to use here. You'll see a list of sections for which that data file contains data. So in my case, I have six sections. This is a somewhat contrived file I chose. Uh, I, I reduced my data file to contain only data for the sections for which I have images loaded, just to keep things simple. Uh, and you'll also see a list of the fields available for each of those sections. In our case, of course, they're all the same, density and MS1. So to plot data, choose the section you'd like to plot for. Uh, this is section 9A, and I will zoom in a bit just to highlight this. So I'm going to choose section 9A, and if I want to plot density, all I do is check the show checkbox by density, and there it is at my density values. If I want to add MS, I can do that as well. I can take them away just as easily by unchecking the box. Uh, if I want to do that on section 8A, I can do the same thing. So it's pretty straightforward just to add and remove graphs. Just use the show checkbox. Now, to modify the appearance of these graphs, you can use some other controls. Uh, first of all, to change the color, we'll just reduce this to one graph for now, we'll just do density. If we wanted to change this from this green color to, say, red, click the color column in the properties table, and then choose whatever color you like, hit OK, and suddenly we have a red density graph. If you prefer a different style of graph, you have some to choose from. There's, it's currently a line graph, but you can change it to points, cross points, or a line connecting a series of points. If you have multiple graphs, we'll go back to line here, if we have multiple graphs and we want them all plotted on the same axis, we can click collapse graphs and as you can see both will now be drawn on the same axis. If you want to modify the scaling of your graph, uh, you can do that using these fields. It, it defaults to whatever the, oh, excuse me, the, the scale values will default to whatever the range of the section is. As you can see, this matches uh, that value exactly, and the max here matches the max for this section. Uh, but if we wanted to change that, for instance, if we wanted the, the uppermost point of the graph to be 3 instead of 1.4, we can change that and click Apply. And as you can see, now our values are a bit lower in the graph. Uh, you can modify that as you wish. I'm going to change it back to original value to click apply to make that change go into effect. You can also exclude values. Uh, so for instance, suppose that uh, any value less than zero on this graph was actually an outlier, bad data, and we didn't want to plot it in any way. Uh, then what we can do is use the excluded values field, and we want to exclude values that are less than zero. So all we have to do is put a zero in the less than field, and click apply and we should see some of those values go away. And only one of them did. <laughs> the leftmost value here did go away. If I remove this and apply again you can see it come back. Uh, I could also exclude all values greater than something. For instance if I thought all values greater than 1.3 were invalid I could enter that on the greater than portion of the excluded values and click apply and as you can see many of those values now flattened out change that back to nothing and they'll come back. 
if I'm graph, if I'm using a, a line style graph, when I exclude values, by default, the line will simply skip over excluded values. Uh, that is, the line will be continuous. Uh, it will simply be as if the excluded values aren't there. But if you want a gap in the line where values have been excluded, you can check the leave gaps at excluded values box. And now if I exclude all values greater than 1.3 again, hopefully, yes, we'll see some gaps. So you can see that between these two points there was an excluded value. Uh, line will not connect them in this case. If I uncheck this and click apply, lines will be connected again. So those are the basics of controlling the appearance of your graphs. Now, if you have lots and lots of sections, it's going to be very tedious to graph them one by one. Uh, plot density. Click this one. Plot density. Click this one. Plot density. Click this one. Plot. So that's going to take a long time. Fortunately, this dialog supports multiple selection, perhaps as evidenced by the Select All button here. Uh, so. Uh, you can either by shift clicking or control clicking as we've discussed in earlier tutorials. Uh, suppose for instance that I wanted to graph MS1 on all three sections of track 10A. I can shift click. I've selected all three sections and note that the data range will display the minimum and maximum of, of all selected sections and the same goes for scale when you have multiple sections selected. Uh, if I want to now plot density 1, I can simply click density 1, and it plots for all three of them. And same goes for removing it. I could add MS1 for all three. I could add density 1. If I wanted to, I could remove density 1 from only section 2 of that by changing my selection. Uh, so as you can see, multiple selection is a fairly powerful way to plot graphs on many things at once. Uh, it should be fairly efficient way to plot graphs on many sections at a single time. You can also, by using the bracket keys, change the, the standard size of graphs. No matter what your scaling value is, uh, a graph at present will always take up this much space. Uh, but if you want it to be larger, for instance if you're zoomed way, way out, and you want to see a bit more detail in the graphs, you can make them larger by using the bracket keys. Uh, the right bracket key will make them scale vertically, uh, scale positively vertically, and the left bracket key will reduce them. And that applies to all graphs, regardless of what you have selected. Uh, this will affect every single graph that is visible at any given time. So I believe that is it for the graphing dialog, or the basics of it at least. Uh, play around, experiment. Thanks for uh, watching this tutorial.